What's happening, options traders? Welcome back, everyone. Well, this video is by special request from one of the traders in our group asking for some more technical analysis for an oldie but goodie called On Balance Volume, or OBV. One of the things that I really like about this indicator is that it's intuitively appealing. It makes a lot of sense. Unlike some of the other technical indicators that we've seen when you're going, what in the world are they calculating? You've got 25 different things that you're multiplying, dividing, and subtracting, and it's really hard to figure out what the indicator means. That's not so for OBV. So it's definitely one that you should know and throw onto your charts. So what is OBV? How do you calculate it? And how do you read it? Well, unbalanced volume was developed by a guy named Joe Granville back in 1963. So as you can imagine, computers were not real prevalent. and We don't have all of the fancy technicals that we do today. And again, that doesn't mean it was bad, but a lot of the indicators from back then were all done by hand. So they tended to be on a simpler level. And what this one does is it just measures cumulative volume. We're just going to keep a running total. Up days give us positive volume, down days give us negative, and we're just going to tabulate it. So what it does is it adds volume on the up days and it subtracts volume on the down days. And again, it's just keeping a running balance or a cumulative total. So the basic idea is that traders can use divergences between OBV and price to predict reversals. Most of your technical indicators have a divergent type of interpretation to them, and OBV does as well. But you can also use it to confirm trends. So if we're seeing that the stock prices are running up, is this a trend we can have confidence in? Well, let's go take a look at OBV. And if OBV is also showing a very strong uptrend, then yes, more of the volume is being attributed to the up days. And we can do the reverse for the down days. Now we can also use it for the divergent method by seeing if maybe the stock prices are going up, but OBV is going flat or down. And so we're going, hmm, this looks a little suspicious. How are prices continuing to rise when the OBV is going flat to maybe down. That's a divergence. But the reason that all of these interpretations work is that in the world of technical analysis, it is widely believed that volume precedes price. And I think there's some good economic rationale for that. And what this means is that before prices turn, coming out of let's say a downtrend, and before they rise, it requires a lot of volume coming in, a lot of conviction on these updates. And sometimes you'll hear technicians talk about volume in terms of conviction. If we're seeing an uptrend, but there's not a lot of volume, you have to say not a lot of conviction. We want to see a lot of traders pouring in to confirm that. So if we're seeing prices drop, but the OBV starting to rise, we would say that's probably a reversal point. So again, fairly straightforward with the calculations and the interpretation. But just to make sure you understand, let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet and take a closer look at the calculations. All right, so now we're into an Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to use Apple and I'm looking at three months worth of data from 315 all the way down through 614 of 2021, which was yesterday's date. So it's just the past three months and the only price that we need is the closing price. So these prices right there are the closing prices for those days. The first thing that we need to do is to figure out if any particular day was an up day or a down day. So let's say that we're going to make our first data point March 16th. So the stock closed at 125.57. Previous day was 123.99. So this is an up day. We're going to make this a positive one to signify up. And I've also color coded it in green to be a nice visual that this is an up day. Now the volume on that day was this 115.2 million. So I'm going to take this volume times one, which of course gives me that number. And that is also going to be my OBV number. Now you might be wondering why am I not using this volume from 315? And that's because I needed 315 just to figure out if this day was an up day or a down day. So we kind of have to ignore this volume. So we need two days to get our first data point. So right now we've got an OBV of 115.2 million. What happens next? 317, 
Stock closed at 124.76, and that was down from 125.57. So that becomes a minus one in this column. The volume on that day was almost 112 million. So we take minus one times this, and that of course gives us negative of that number. So the OBV is just going to keep a running total. So we're going to take 115 million positive, combine it with minus 111 million. So now we're down to 3.3 million. That's what's meant by a running total. So if we had another positive number, if this was positive 111, we would add those two. And we just keep going all the way down the list. And once we have this column and we chart it, that's what you're looking at over here in blue. So some of the ways that you would read it is, let's say if we were looking at the stock price as well, if the stock price was going up and we're going, hmm, is this trend for real? Well, we might look at OBV and say, oh, wow, look at the volume coming in behind this trend. Most of the volume is coming in from the up days. So we would say, yes, this looks to be like a for real trend. But what if we looked at the stock prices, the stock prices were continuing to rise, but we saw this, or maybe even saw this. That's a divergence. We would say the stock price is rising, but OBV is showing that there's not a lot of conviction behind it. The OBV is actually going sideways to down. And then we would say that's a divergence. And so that's really just how easy it is. If we were watching the stock prices fall, and we saw this as well, the OBV falling, we would say that's a very strong conviction, probably a very powerful downtrend. But what if we saw the stock prices continuing to fall, but we saw this? We would say, hmm, this looks a little odd. Why is OBV rising when the stock prices are falling? This would be a divergence. Again, assuming that the stock prices were in fact falling. So that's really just the two basic ways. Now, there are some ways where people will use them as support and resistance points. I don't know if I find them to be all that useful. For me, the most powerful signals come from the divergences. So now that you have a basic understanding of OBV, let's take a look at what our final result was. Somewhere around minus, let's call it 87 million for Apple. So depending on where your broker's platform anchors or where it starts, you could get different numbers. But the numbers aren't so important as the shape of the graph. So for our small set of calculations here for three months, we should be at about minus 87 million for Apple. So let's go over to E-Trade, find out how to put OBV on the platform, and then we'll do it in Thinkorswim. Okay, so now we're into the E-Trade platform. I'm looking at Apple. And to put OBV on your platform, come up here to Studies, slide down to All Studies, and over here under the O's, all by itself, can't miss it, on balance volume, click there. Don't get a lot of parameters to change other than just the color. And so we choose save, and there is our OBV. Now, you can see that E-Trade is showing it at about 3.98, almost 4 billion. So they're obviously starting at a different point from where we were three months ago. But again, the important thing is more about the shape and so if we were to look at the graph that I had in Excel, it had about this shape. So don't get too worried about the numbers as much as the shape. So the reason we're getting different numbers is because E-Trade is anchoring back somewhere, maybe a year, not really sure. But one thing I have found out, little side note, if you go back in E-Trade far enough, you'll see it kind of spin like that. And for some reason, it locks into a different anchor period. And see, now you can get a different, you can get a different reading. Now we're at 83 and a half billion. So it, something throws it. And unfortunately, it doesn't surprise me a lot with uh, E-Trade. They seem to have some calculation glitches in here. But once again, if you happen to notice that, don't worry too much about it because it's not really going to affect the interpretations. So let's zoom in a tiny bit, and I'm going to grab some crosshairs. And let's take a look at, let's see if we can find, this might be a good one. So notice during this period, this is from 412 through about 429, basically half of April right through here, and very sideways. 
but take a look straight down below. Do you see how we got this big curl right there? Okay, again, look straight up at the candle up here. That was a sideways motion in the stock prices, but OBV was dropping big time. So that might be an indication of saying this is a divergence. Why are the stock prices going sideways, but the OBV is coming down? That's showing that more of the volume is being attributed to down days. And if you think about that, probably a good idea that prices are about to reverse, and that is in fact what we got. I also mentioned we could use it to confirm trend. Maybe we got the bounce off the 200 day in yellow, and we're watching this nice trend. Is this for real? Well, look at the OBV. Nice big uptrend. So it shows that yes, this trend is very strong. Now one thing you do have to be careful with, especially for the downturns, like let's come back here to coronavirus. I don't know why this platform seems to have a mind of its own. I'm not zooming in like that. It's doing it on its own. Um, but let's say during coronavirus, notice that when the prices pretty much bottomed out, we hit, look at this, right on the 500 day moving average with a hammer, big, powerful candlestick pattern, followed by a kicker pattern off of a major moving average. This is a textbook perfect, one of the best signals you could ever get in technical analysis that prices are probably going to reverse. But take a look at OBV down here. You see how it continued to trend down? This is why you really need to use this in conjunction with other indicators. And the reason for this should be fairly simple. If you think about it, we had massive negative numbers coming through here. And if you think about the calculation, in order to turn those back to positive, in other words, for this line to start going up, it's going to take a lot of positive days before we see that turn. So you can get lags like this. And that's why you do have to be careful and not rely on it just by itself. But I hope that gives you at least some of the basics of OBV. And it's one that I definitely cover in the technical analysis course. But for now, let's jump over to Thinkorswim and find out how to put OBV on your charts there. Now we're in the TOS platform. I've got Apple. And to put a technical study on your chart for TOS, come up here to Studies, left mouse click, come down to Add Study. And a few ways we can get to it here. If we come up to All Studies, we can get a little alphabetical listing. Come down to O's, M through O, and right there is On Balance Volume. Left mouse click, and there it is. Now in TOS, you can come back up to Studies, choose Edit Study, and if you click on the cog wheel next to the study, there's On Balance Volume, click on the cog wheel, and you can change some the colors. Maybe if you want a thicker line or a dotted line, you can change it. If I wanted to make it, let's say, blue, I could do it, make it a little bit thicker. You can change some of the parameters. And there we go. There's our OBV. Now it looks like Thinkorswim has a different number, about 2.18 million. So again, it depends on where they're anchoring, but the shape of the OBV should be the same, and the interpretations are always the same. So those are the basics of OBV. I hope it helps you to understand it better, and give it a shot. Put it on your platforms, and make some comments in the Facebook group, and let me know what you think.